Amen. Let the church say amen. Then the king said, give the child to the first woman, for she is pleading for his life, and by no means kill him, for she is the mother. On this Mother's Day Sunday, I want to use for a title, that's a real mother for you. That, that's a real mother for you. We want to celebrate this morning our oldest living mother here. You celebrated the First Lady of Journey, and I appreciate that, my wife, Olisa. But we have the oldest active living mother this morning, Miss Floyd, 95 years young, grandmother, grandmother, great-grandmother. Stand up. Let's give her a hand this morning. Love on her a little bit. Love on her a little bit. Let's stand up and wave at us. Amen, 95 years young. Hey, that's a real mother for you. That's a real mother for you. Amen. Let's give our daughter a great big hand as well who nurtures her and takes care of her. Amen. We love you, Miss Floyd. We love you, and we thank you for always inspiring us to keep going on higher and higher in the Lord. Solomon in one of the defining moments in his reign, the wisest man to have ever lived, Solomon had to identify the real mother in a very tricky dispute over a living child. But he got the real mother to identify herself by reinforcing and by forcing her to take a stand. When she stood up for her child, she showed herself to be the true mother. So as we celebrate today on this Mother's Day Sunday, when the chips are down, Real mothers stand up. Can I get a witness? When the chips are down, real mothers stand up. In our text this morning, we start out with two women as according to kings that, the first kings that were prostitutes. Real mothers are not always perfect, amen? Real mothers are not perfect, and I thought the story to be fitting because these two women came from different, different um, 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 backgrounds, but they had similar professions. They had the commonality that both were mothers, although their lifestyle may have been questionable. Real mothers are not always perfect. Amen. They're not always perfect prepared to be mothers. I don't know how many mothers would admit this morning that you were fully prepared to be a mother. You knew everything you needed to know. Most women and even men, Father's Day just 30 days away, man, amen, would admit under the best of circumstances that she and or they were not fully prepared for motherhood. You, you say what you're going to do, amen, until it's what? Time to do it. An interesting thing is, as I've raised along with my wife two children and also have nieces, you all got a lot of advice coming from folk that ain't never been around children, coming from people that never had to raise any. Everybody is an expert until you're in that situation. Real mothers are not always perfect because they experience childbearing. They, they experience changes in their life and in their body as they give birth to the most significant thing in your life, and that's you. Hey Amen. If you're looking back at your mother's head now, she's not perfect. If you're looking at her as, as she looks as today or as she used 
to look realize she looked like she looked right now because of you. Amen. Amen. So if she looked good, it's because of you. If she don't look too good, it's, it's because of you. you I, I don't have enough time to tell you how many times I would be home and we'd be there with my sons, with my college friends. I bring some guys over the house and mama just come out the room. Amen. Just boom, boom, bam. It, just being the boom, boom, mama. Say, you don't like how I look, you get out of my house. Amen. She looked the way she looked because of me and my sisters. Physically, they are, have to adapt their bodies. Emotionally, they, they extend their love. There's a special gene in women, amen. That, that, that emotional gene, the same thing that'll make them cry during a movie. Praise God. I look at First Lady sometime, we be watching a movie, and she start crying. I listen, what you crying for? Ain't time for crying. Get to the good part when somebody get thrown off the cliff. That, that same gene that, that will make them emotional when you don't, when you don't know what's going on. Say, like, what's going on? What's going on? If I just knew, Leona, what's going on, I would know what's going on. Amen. That, that, that same emotional gene allows them to extend their love and to give love when loving ain't easy. Amen. It allows them to give that love when it, in, in those places that are unlovable and to give that love during times when love has run out. God gave our mothers that gene in order that we might see an unconditional love in mother and realize that God put it in them so that we would understand how God first loved us. Mm. It's modeled behind the love of Jesus Christ who loved us at our worst and he loved us at our best. Real mothers are not always perfect because emotionally they extend themselves. You remember that rap song came out, was it ludicrous? It said, I'm about to lose my mind up in here. Up in here, who was it? DMX. Isn't that the one went to jail? Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right. When that song came out, that was a remake for me. Because I'd heard that all my life. <laughs> all my life I heard a woman saying, I'm about to lose my mind up in here. If I come home one more time and these dishes in the sink, if, if, I, if you bring me another grade home, if that teacher call and, and say, I'm about to have the fool up in here, if you suck your teeth one more time, when I tell you what to do, I'm, I'm about to lose my mind. I said, somebody got rich. We should have been rich because she's been saying this all my life. Yeah, she a little off. Probably should have went to jail behind <laughs> DMX. Real mothers are not perfect because they extend themselves. And you can't, you can't extend yourself in so many different ways without it affecting you socially. Real mothers, they, they, they alter their activities and their commitments. They extend themselves socially and make sure they are where they need to be intellectually. Intellectually. They become the homework specialists. Intellectually, they become experts in science, math, and English and language arts. Intellectually, they learn whatever they need to learn. Educationally, they become what they need to be. Spiritually, they realize the greatest need in their child's life is a relationship with God. God, the greatest need in their life, just like Timothy's mother and grandmother realized in the book of First and Second Timothy that he needed a relationship with the Almighty God. A real mother for you knows that praying and having your children before the altar of God is the 
best blessing you can give them in their life. Because one day you're going to leave here. I said last Sunday, I encouraged everybody. I said, come, don't, don't stay away, but come and celebrate if your mother is living or she's gone beyond. But realize that one day, no matter how much you lean on her, no matter how much she's been to you spiritually or physically and or emotionally, one day you're going to have to stand in this world by yourself and say, mother, I'll meet you on the other side. And unless you get close to the Lord, you won't be able to stand. Mama, tell your children the truth. Because we ain't going to let them go with you now. And we're not going to hold up the funeral. If you don't love them while she's here, don't come to us when she's gone. Say, Rev, I see her one more time. Well, all right, you see her when we put her, we let her go. But do now, now. Love her now. So in time to let go, I'm giving a little therapy right now. You ain't got to make an appointment. Love on her now. So when it's time to let go, you can say like Job, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Don't be no spoiled brat and understand that God blessed you with a mother and just like he blessed me and he blessed everybody else in this room. But real mothers understand that the relationship you give that child with the Lord will last. It outlasts everything. Amen. They're going to need somebody else to call on. I know I'm a witness. When you are not around, they're going to need somebody else to depend on. When you are not around, they're going to need someone else to help remind them of what's right and what's wrong when mother is not around. The mother in our text this morning, as we examine it for the next few seconds, her child, she realized her child, that something had happened seriously wrong. This mother pleaded over her child's life. She was there with the other mother, realized they were not perfect, and they came up on a situation. One of the mothers lay on her child and smothered him to death. And the second mother was not willing to give up her child that easy. So they took it to the king, Solomon, one of, his, one of his inaugural cases to decide and to make sure that he was truly fit to rule over the kingdom. And that's why Solomon was known as one of the wisest men to have ever lived. Solomon gave a judgment that still lives and still speaks volumes even to this day. When those women were fighting over the living child, Solomon put real motherhood to the test. Solomon put real emotional love to the test. Solomon put real dedication to the test. Solomon put real selfishness to the test. He said, if they can't decide whose child it is, I'll tell you what I'll do. Bring me a sword and cut him in two. Give half to the one woman and half to the other woman. And they're prostitutes. They used to share in any way. So give them each half of a child. And the real mother said, no, you ain't going to kill him. If I have to let this child go, I prefer to let the child go and live than to be with me and die. A real mother is willing to give up what she wants in order that her child might live. Is there any real mothers that ever gave up buying your pair of shoes? In order that your child might have a pair of shoes. Is there any real mother that saw that dress in Macy's? Stand up real mama. And you say that dress would look good on me. But then you had a little snotty nose boy or girl that needed a dress to go to school. And you said take the dress back. Did you ever buy something and kept the tags on it and waited a while and your child got sick and you needed some medication. You needed to go and take them to the doctor and you took that stuff back and said, I need the money because my child is in need. A real mother will sacrifice what she need for her child. Daddy, you don't get it, do you? Dad said, I don't understand. It ain't got it. I gave it to him two, ten times. Let him have it. But mama said, no, I'm going to find it. 
I'm going to find a way to give them what they need. Real mothers extend themselves and they give themselves in ways that we really don't understand. There was a boy who had just lost his mother. And he was sitting home after the services. And generally, as we would do years, years, the families would come back to the house for prayer. And the families would come back to the house to eat. And the pastor came and saw the boy not sitting in the house, but sitting out front in the grass. And he came and said, son, you realize your mother's in a better place? And the boy said, yes, sir, I realize it. He said, you realize that she loved you. She loved you with a whole heart. He said, yes, sir, I realize. I said, you realize that she's looking down on you right now. And the boy said, yes, yes, pastor, I realize that. And he said, well, everything's going to be all right. And he said, I realize that everything's going to be all right. And the pastor said, well, what is it? What is it? What else is there? And he said, pastor, I just want to know if my mama's in heaven. Does heaven have visiting hours? Does heaven have visiting hours? Real mothers leave a legacy. That even when they're not here, can I get a witness, church? Even when they are not here, they leave a legacy. So last night I was writing a sermon. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. I had it in the notes and because it spoke to me and I said, I, I just went on Facebook and I said, I, I wish heaven had visiting hours. I just want to go up there and talk again. I just want to get an idea on the next recipe. I want to hear tell me how much, how much sugar and butter and how much, how much, how much milk supposed to go in the cornbread. I, I, I just want to, I just want to hear tell me that, that I look good in my clothes, you know, and, and my shirt ain't ironed. And, and I want to hear, ask me, how you doing and are you behaving yourself? I, I say, I'm a grown man, but still are you behaving yourself? Real mothers leave a legacy that even when they're gone, even when they are gone, that we remember the sacrificial love they gave. What's your legacy? What's your legacy? What's your legacy? What, what will be remembered about you that, that even when you are gone, people will ask, I wonder if they have visiting hours up there. I just want to go check in for a moment. I want to go listen and hear their voice one more time. In the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Let the church say amen. amen. Put your hands together, Journey. Come on. Put your